Welcome to the Starting with Podcast. I'm your host, Edward Shelton, aka Dark Logos, and this is a show where we look at the strategies, tactics, and mechanics behind the game of Hero Clicks. Uh, except for today. Today is going to be a, a, a little bit, well, a lot different. Uh, so, uh, pretty much, uh, I'll, I'll just uh, start with where it's at. Uh, I'd like to give an apology uh, to Dan Powell and Sam Powell, uh, mainly because I was. In particular for Dan, I was mistaken on an event that happened uh, with him and when I talked about prize splitting. Um, and Dan talked with Dan. He said he's never prize split uh, to get first place. So uh, I apologize in saying that. I was wrong. So uh, like I said, I misunderstood uh, situation. And then um, I apologize to Sam Powell because I, I brought up some things that were going on. Uh, the live stream during Rocktober that uh, probably wasn't the best just to bring up. So uh, with that, uh, that's that's pretty much it. And uh, today we're going to get into uh, some interesting questions uh, on uh, from uh, Malcolm Rush. And uh, Malcolm Rush has given me a bunch of good backlog of questions. Uh, so. Uh, <laughs> I, I I think I'm I'm due to 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 deal with them. So uh, that's pretty much going to be uh, the rest of today's show. Uh, I'm trying to get ready for Worlds. Uh, so again, uh, things may be shorter or longer or uh, in, in all for all intents and purposes, uh, maybe uh, not as meta focused as some people would like. Uh, mainly just because of time, and uh, I'm just sort of laser focused on on getting ready. So, uh, yeah. All right. So let's get started. So, uh, first question: um, Over the years, WizKids introduced uh, many different mechanics. Which ones uh, did you love, uh, hate, uh, or, or over the years? Um, best mechanic. I felt that they introduced uh, was Alter Ego. I, I think it's the, the best mechanic that they had because it, it did allow you to use side pieces and potentially get maybe an extra click or two out of a character. Also, it, it really made it so that you could start looking at alternative point costs for characters. So, Alter Ego, I think, is the the best thing that was introduced to Hero Clicks because it actually allowed game design to start asking itself a, a little bit more deeply about uh, multi-costed uh, points on a standard figure that's you know and not just colossal figures. Uh, worst one, I have to be honest. Even though I played them a lot, ID cards. Uh, at first, I was like, yes, ID cards pretty much allow you to rally. Uh, and do a lot. My problem is now with ID cards, um, ID cards can turn into complete force replacement. Uh, and that's that's more of my concern about ID cards. Now they are liabilities and you know points can get skewed really hard, but I was hoping that WizKids would take a break from ID cards and allow us to see what the game is like without them. And I think the game with them, it, it's not as fun as it could be. Uh, for example, this last weekend or this past Friday, uh, I played a Turtles team with a Turtle Van and Talia Al Ghul piloting a 100-point Turtle Van. I need a standard prop because I wasn't going to get theme prop. And I don't have enough decent turtles to run a 400 point turtles team so in in the middle of everything um i played against another guy and he was playing uh foot clan and uh he got uh like i think it's like 100 points of continue tokens off of me and i scored uh, 110 off of him and the game mattered more about how I positioned what I was doing and what click I was on versus knowing 
Like, yeah, I could call in somebody or he could call in somebody and it would completely change the game state. So being able to focus in on the actual board itself more than worrying about the call-ins is beneficial. Now, again, ID cards do open up a lot of different thought processes uh, in the game. But unfortunately, like I think I remember... Uh, Tiago uh, Pinto de Luz said one time, it's like, uh, I forgot which show, it was either the Meta Lab or Two Clicks from KO. I think he said, like, the most perfect figure right now would be a 150 point figure that had zero attack, zero damage, 20 defense, perplexed prob, and outwit. And that character would be the most perfect figure in Hero Clicks. And it was like nine clicks of life or something like that with two stop clicks. Yeah, like, that figure is completely stupid, uh, but it is, like, the perfect ID card summoner, and that's that's pretty much what it is. And so, that's not really the point of the game. So, uh, I more look at, like, ID cards as being the the element that has allowed for a lot of diversification, but also has taken some of the focus off of the, the actual game itself. Alright, next up, uh, WizKids has stopped using some of these uh, mechanics. Which ones would you want WizKids to bring back? And what changes would you have them uh, make for them to be better to fit uh, today's game? Uh, I would want AE back. I, I definitely want AE back. Um, Morph is not bad, and I think Morph was what they learned from AE. Um, but I, I want AE back. I, I don't really think there's much that you need to do other than the fact that you should be able to change into the other character without a costed uh, power action. I think that's the only thing I, I feel. Like, you, you get your one chance, you swap over, you can't swap back. And I think that would be a really good uh, boon for the game. I think that would be yeah the best thing. Uh, which mechanics that uh, is still in use in the game that you would get rid of and why uh, or fix and how would you fix it? Like I said, I, said, I think currently I would get rid of uh, ID cards. I think I, I, I've sort of gone over that. Uh, if I was to fix ID cards, I would limit, and I know this sounds bad, I would limit three ID cards to a force. So you have three comebacks. Uh, I think that in particular would make them still desirable, still useful, uh, but you can't just bank your entire game around it. Uh, now, I know some people would say, like, hey, but what do you do about Teleporter and Roundtable and Jet and all those other things? Um, yeah, and that's that unfortunately, like, Teleporter and the, the Table... Uh, I would say would be the exceptions. Uh, Jet and and Blackbird sort of get screwed. Uh, I I really don't know if there is a best way of balancing out ID cards because I think the major issue is that you're able to have so many of them. I think that's their number one uh, issue. Or you could just say when you call in a character, uh, they're going to be called in on the same click number as uh, the character that summons them. Uh, which, if you think about it, it's been one of the main reasons why we, we haven't really thought about medics seriously in the game for a while. I mean, we have alternative forms of healing that become a lot more dominant, but I think, in particular, there hasn't really been a reason to be top die on most of your game because of ID cards. So the, the focus on support has sort of just gone away. All right, uh, let's keep going. Uh, which mechanics is over or underused in today's game, and what would you suggest to WizKids to improve that issue problem? I, I think support is underused, but I just think that's the state of the game because we're seeing a bunch of like very aggressive burst-type damage meta. Uh, so, yeah, that's, that's what I would say. I don't think support needs to be fixed. Uh, so I, I think... The best thing I can say is everything is fine. Not all powers are in the 
the best space, but they're in decent spaces. Uh, the one mechanic, uh, next question, uh, the one mechanic that you think people still don't understand and how you, uh, would fix that. I think, unfortunately, I, I think most mechanics now are well covered. I think the only one that most people might not know that well would be Death Trap and Capture. And it's quite clear WizKids just moved away from Capture. Because uh, they didn't like the way that it was going. Uh, and that's fine. Um, but I, I would just tell people, you know, hey, capture. You get, you know, if you have plasticity or uh, shape change, combat, I think it's like plasticity, phasing, you get plus two to your defense when someone attempts to capture you. And, I mean, you can still use shape change and super senses and combat reflexes and energy shield and all the other stuff. But, uh, yeah. Uh, I think that's what I would do to I would bring capture back and just explain on the card what capture does alright uh, if WizKids did hear about uh, the new mechanic or sorry if you could make a new mechanic for hero clicks what would it be and how would it work uh, if I could make a new mechanic um, I would I would just straight up have it be a, a modification of the um, yeah it, it would be a, a modification of the uh, team ability and uh, I would call it like something for if everybody on your team shares a non-generic theme a uh, non-generic keyword uh, I would have like a faction ability and uh, it, it would go something along the lines of you know if like or or you get like faction bonus or something it's like if someone has leadership and you're adjacent to a character with leadership or yeah hold on wait you would pay five points that yeah let's just say you pay somewhere between five to ten points because you can't just get stuff for free um and let's just say you're adjacent to somebody with leadership uh you get plus one to your attack if you're adjacent uh and, and it's like a unique modifier so you don't just get to stack and stack and stack it if you're adjacent uh, to someone uh, that has prob uh, or perplex or outwit, uh, you get uh, super senses on six for one friendly character uh, that's adjacent uh, to you know a character using that uh, ability once per turn. Uh, you know uh, if you if, if a character possesses, like, or can use leap climb or phasing, an adjacent friendly character can get plus one to movement. Uh, like, I, I will allow you to, like, buff everything but damage and uh, defense. You know? Uh, so that's that's what I would, I would do. Because uh, the main reason I wouldn't want to buff damage is that, again, even though you're paying a low cost... Uh, I don't want folks to be like, all right, well, I have a bunch of two damage guys. I'm going to use, I'm going to pay five points for faction, and now they're going to do three. Uh, I think you still need to design for, you know, significant damage ratios. But I also do believe, like, if you bump someone's movement, attack, range, uh, yeah, movement, attack, and, and range, uh, you're doing good. If you get, grant somebody super senses on six, because you're adjacent to, you know, somebody that has prob out with or perplex. I, I think that's fine. As long as it isn't the whole team gets it. It's like you pick a term, one character gets it, and that's it. I think that would, if you said like faction or, you know, core team member, or however you would want to name it, I think that would be a good mechanic. Uh, if WizKids did hear about that new mechanic, how likely would WizKids use it and why? Mm. more than likely not because they wouldn't want something to be confused with theme teams and to they would want to keep theme teams uh, still sort of clear so if you then said like hey on top of that now you have faction uh, I think some folks would they wouldn't want confusion even though you could just label it big F all caps faction and the faction rules are, are in the book so and you wouldn't and the best part is is that you wouldn't have to go out 
and change any cards or make weird erratas on uh, old characters. Uh, yeah, you know, and if, if let's just say, for example, uh, I forgot which map it is, you pay for it and you get Super Senses on 6, and uh, you had faction ability, and you're next to a person that gives you prop, uh, outwit, or perplex, you would still only get Super Senses on 6. You wouldn't, it wouldn't stack or anything weird. All right, uh, next question. Uh, over the years of Heroclix podcast uh, that came, came and went, uh, number one, what was some of your favorite Heroclix podcast uh, you listened to over the years, and are they still on the air? Um, my favorite one, really, if I if I count like long time listenership, has been two clicks from Ko. Um, I've probably listened to it the longest, uh, and yeah, of course, I mean, it's still, it's still on the air, uh, but back when it wasn't so much meta, so many meta podcasts, I used to listen to, uh, Push to Region, and I've had love and, uh, I've had more love than hate with Push to Region, with Push to Region, I would say, like, my hate is probably at max, like, 10%. You know, um, and mainly uh, that ten percent just comes from. I wish that they would would have gone in a little bit more in depth or hit a little bit harder on certain things. But again, they were more of a positive force for the game than me, who has been like, let's look at it how it is type thing. Uh, and they were a lot more casual guys. Uh, who like to be competent. They they weren't going to roll over and say, like, I'm a casual, so uh, I'm going to cry because I lost. No, they they were looking to become better players. And that's, that's one of the main reasons I respected them. I didn't agree with everything that they said, but I, I respected them for it. Uh, which segments did you like on uh, those Heroclix podcasts? Uh, what's funny is, is that before two, uh, before Dollars for Hero Clicks did it, the whole value corner that really came from Push to Region, uh, Push to Region, um, and I, I think the the whole idea of you know inexpensive figures that are good is really important because it allows people to refocus uh, and widen their lens uh, of the game. I think most people don't have a, a good diversified view uh, of the game right now. Uh, so yeah, that's that's why. All right. Uh, next up. Uh, so which ones I still listen to? I still listen to two uh, two clicks from Ko. Uh, if you could get one of the Hero Clicks podcasts back, which one and why? Oh. Realistically, if I could get any show back, uh, it would be the Vegas' guys show because I thought that they actually did a good job and it was entertaining enough. Um, and I, I forgot the name of their show. Uh, and Because I, I used to be subscribed to it. Um, yeah. Uh, but uh, but anyway, uh, that's the show I would bring back, and I and I sort of throw some shade at the Vegas guys recently, um, and I, I won't front on that. But the main reason I would want that show back is I felt like they were the Utah Jazz to Majestic's you know Lakers on the West Coast. I felt like they were a needed force on the West Coast for being a competitive mindset. And I wanted to hear what they had to say. Uh, I think Patrick and Kevin had a had a really good and great insights. But I also was trying to get another peek into the thought process out there. So I, I forgot what their show was called. Um, but yeah. So yeah, I would uh, I would definitely would want their podcast back. Uh, any advice to people who want to, uh, to do or start a new podcast? Yes. Uh, yes, yes, 
and triple yes. Uh, first and foremost, know your release schedule. Are you weekly, bi-weekly, monthly? You know, uh, who are you targeting? Why do they listen to you? Why would they care? Uh, do you have a place in the community that you are talking to and about? Are you in the major forums of, of said community? Uh, could, how long do you plan on doing this? I mean, if you can do the show currently right now because you, you have, you know, no family um, and you're out and about, then, okay, great, that works. Like, But if you get a girlfriend, will things change? If, if you get a wife and kids or a husband and kids, will things change? Is your format conducive uh, to you being able to produce it uh, in, in a period of time that's acceptable? Um, you know, one of the major reasons I don't really do a lot of video is the editing time takes a lot out of you. So the videos that I had at Rocktober to get them edited, most of those, like the first one, I know I spent a minimum two hours editing. And then the second one with Wes, my interview with Wes, I think that was about three and a half hours of editing. Because you're listening to it, making the chop, re-listening to it, making sure that it you know, makes sense. Okay, making sure that everything is, you know, slides in right. Uh, there, there's a lot of work. Even the, the Rocktober promo, which, yeah, I, I didn't get paid for. I did for fun. So I'm not saying this in, in the complaining sense. That was five hours of work. You know, from listening to the music, figuring, getting the logos, uh, recording the audio, how many takes I've done. You know, so there's that. Uh, the next thing I usually tell people is uh, your first 25 episodes suck. They just do. There, there's, there's really no getting around that your first 25 episodes suck. Uh, I, know, I know people that are like, well... I think I'm just that good. Well, okay, that's fine. You 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 believe that, but what you're going to find out is you you don't fully know your voice as a speaker and as a as a host until that 25 uh, episode mark, because by then a, a couple of big things have happened. Uh, number one, your uh, your true audience has chimed in. The folks that like you for your personality said, yo, you need to fix this. Also, your haters have chimed in. And not all your haters are uh, the worst thing for you. Uh, and that's that's to be, you know, to uh, be very clear. So, uh, there's a story that I'm reminded of. And uh, it goes along like this. Uh, a, a mouse comes out of a barn in the middle of winter and uh, it's running around um, trying to find food uh, because there's there's no more food for it uh, to eat uh, in its uh, attempt of, of running around it uh, first uh, encounters uh, a dog and the dog uh, you know, ask, sorry, the cat, ask, sorry, the mouse asked the dog, uh, where can I, I find some food? Uh, the dog barks at him and tells him, uh, I, I don't know, uh, go over there. I think there's food over there. So the mouse runs over uh, into the field uh, to try to find food. And then uh, he encounters uh, uh, the cow. And at this time, the mouse is really, really cold. And so uh, the cow, uh, he, sorry, the mouse talks to the cow and asks, where can I get food and where can I get warm? And so uh, the mouse says, I'm sorry, the cow says, I don't know uh, how, uh, where to tell you to get warm at. And so while not paying attention, uh, the mouse runs around the cow and eventually the cow poops on the mouse. Well, the mouse starts to warm up and then... Uh, you know, in, inside the poo and the, the cow manure. And so, uh, as the mouse is trying to dig out the cow manure, uh, up along comes the cat. And the cat says, hey, can you help me, uh, sorry, the mouse asks the cat, can you help me get out of this cow manure? And he says, yeah. And uh, the mouse helps the cat get out the cow manure and then eats him. 
Now, as bad as this story sounds, it, it pretty much covers the main thing that that you deal with in podcasting and being a personality and pretty much being in the public, as uh, the uh, the kings of comedy used to put it. Uh, and uh, which which was the one that's like, my name is Tater Salad, that guy. Uh, anyway, I, lo- I loved him. Uh, crap. What were they? They weren't the kings of comedy because that was Steve Harvey and D.L. Hughley and them. What were the other guys? A- anyway, I forgot their name. Uh, but the guy, the guy says, they call me Tater Salad. Uh, not Larry the Cable Guy. And it's not Jeff Foxworthy. It's the guy that looks like he's too sophisticated to be with those three other guys. Uh, anyway, um, yeah, yeah, he, he, he had stuff said about public, but I, anyway, uh, I derail myself, but going back is, is that, you know, anybody that's bigger than you that tells you which way to go is not necessarily telling you the best thing all the time. Um, just because someone craps on you doesn't necessarily mean that they're doing you harm, and everybody that's there to save you. It's not necessarily looking out for your benefit. And that's sort of the tale. That's the lesson of the tale. Um, you know, I've gone and, and talked to a lot of people that have asked to give, you know, I've asked for advice on, on making a podcast. And some of them have pointed me to food. Others have not. Um, there are some that uh, have crapped on me, like, rigorously. And have given me the pretty much the best advice uh that I needed to hear uh, at the time, and I've had people try to save me and or, or get me out of a mess that ended up just taking advantage of me. So that's that's the best thing I could tell you is you know follow that little story, um, and it'll save you from a, a lot of problems in life. Um, yeah. So okay. Um, here we go. Uh, any advice for people who want to do or start uh, a new HeroClix podcast? Who I would tell you if you're going to go out there and compete now, uh, understand how, what is your bottom line? How are you? How much are you going to invest? Is this for fun or profit? The, those are the things that you have to figure out because if if you don't know like what your bottom line is you'll spend way too much money uh, for way little to return re- little return so like I'll put this into perspective my mic that I use is I thank Hunter Smith for telling me the brand of mic what is a hunt uh, is a yeti blue mic um, you can get a snowball for 50. Maybe 25 if you find it on a, a holiday sale or something. Uh, but that's, like, I would call it the starter mic or the uh, mobile uh, recording studio mic. Then you have I, uh, the Blue Yeti mic. Um, that one is the one that I use. It's a, a bit more professional, can go on a lot more rigs, uh, is omnidirectional. A uh, lot higher quality. Uh, there's pros and cons to it, but this is technically like the beginning of, uh, sorry, the top end of your low grade mics. If you go above that, you can get some stupidly good clear mics for your rigs, um, and you can spend upwards to three, four hundred dollars on a good mic. Uh, but here, here's the catch. Are you planning on getting a return on it? Are you planning on selling shirts? Are those shirts going to be cool looking or interesting? Uh, are you planning on selling, you know, uh, shot glasses or whatever else? Are you selling merch? If not, then don't go expensive. Uh, even with the software, like you can get uh, Sony Vega or, or equivalent of it, Photoshop stuff and Premiere, that can run you three to four hundred dollars depending on what packages you get. I use uh, Hit uh, Hit Film Express and it's free and it's a way bigger upgrade from what I was using before 
which was that free software that you get with Windows. Okay, so there is that. But even with Hit Film Express, I could upgrade and get Pro. But even with Pro, uh, there's a problem because they still have like all these different add-ons that you can pretty much pay for uh, to make the effects better and better and better. Uh, so you could, if you wanted to, uh, depending on what you're doing, dump a uh, hundred. 200 another 300 dollars into like hit film if you wanted to so i i mean like know your bottom line um yeah know your bottom line know what is going to cost you money and what's going to make you money and if you're not in it for the money and you're you're not in it for fame or or just to have fun just make sure that you know you know what you're about uh, know who you're targeting and if you want to be popular on YouTube do unboxings unboxings will get you far more views uh, than talking about the game or talking about meta or any of that stuff just do unboxing show your stuff like day one and you'll you'll get hits and views um, but if you're going to try to be like a YouTube uh, like ad member and get paid for your ads and whatnot uh, yeah that's good luck good luck because I, I I would say this if I don't know exactly married with clicks is uh, sub count um, and that's um, and let me let me look it up here real quick okay so they're at the two grand subscriber mark okay so I think that they're at getting ad revenue. I think, um, I because th I, I I think you need like a thousand subs or something uh, to start getting ad revenue. Okay, if at war, if not, it's something like either a thousand or ten. I forgot uh, what it was, but just to sort of put things in perspective, Mary with clicks is pro. It is the biggest. Uh, Hero Click show on YouTube, uh, and I'm looking at something a week ago. It's like 300 views. Uh, then they had, yeah. So them playing games, so 300 views. Uh, there's another one where it's over a year ago, like 1,000 views. Okay. Uh, there's yeah unboxing, uh, 1,000 over a thousand views. Uh, Mary with Click Civil War. Uh, two years ago, yep. So like ten thousand views. Okay. So if if you have something that people can watch and engage with, and it's new product, yeah, you'll get hits. Um, and if you're competent and and you you have a good grasp of the game, then yeah, uh, you'll you'll get views and, and views and hits. So I think that's positive. So yeah. Uh, uh, let's keep going. Uh, any shout outs to the Hero Clicks podcast you like to make? I make my shout outs to all the other shows, uh, pretty frequently. So, uh, if anything, you'll, you'll hear if I shout somebody out for what they're doing. All right. Uh, next up, he has some Halloween questions. And, you know, we're past Halloween, but that's okay. Uh, which is the best and worst Halloween type of Hero Click? Uh, best is scientist and mystical monsters used to be the worst uh, but brute brute would probably be the worst one to use um, if, if I was to to look overall yeah brute would be the worst uh, best and worst sculpture monsters and non monsters uh, that man bad I think everybody just loves it but it's just a crap figure uh, Grim Reaper and Death, they're, I mean, as the worst, they're, they're not too dynamic. They're okay, but they're not too dynamic. Uh, best and worst of black and orange powers. Oh, like uh, Candy Corn. I get it. Bravo on that one. That's a, that's a, that's a creative one. Uh, best orange power. 
uh, energy explosion. Uh, worst orange power, leap climb. <laughs> Best black power. I know this is contention because it's be t like a lot of my uh, best powers I like are right now are black powers, so still energy outwit uh, and region. So best black power has to be outwit overall. Currently, right now, give me still energy um, or region. Uh, worst one, I'll say region, just because it's a hard it's a hard pack. Uh, yeah. Uh, which Halloween type of Heroclix characters, monsters, and non-monsters, uh, do you want WizKids to make? I I actually just think I, I just want to want them to keep up with the uh, the RIP sets, uh, and make their own like general, um, general Heroclix that are that are made out of you know fantasy things that are compatible with the game. That they can sort of drop out there, get a burst in uh, profitability that really doesn't exploit the game, add some cool mechanics that they wanted to add, use it to sort of test the waters and go from there. I think that would be the best thing that that best thing that they can do. Even if they came out with like a Christmas set or uh, you know a Leprechaun set or you know whatever. Like as as long as they're trying ideas, throwing you know the stuff against the wall, seeing what sticks, seeing what's not, and then we get some experimentation before like your Superman or your Black Panther or your Jean Grey gets those types of powers. You know they get they get to do some market testing while making a profit. So uh, I'm down with that. Um, let's see, make a Halloween theme team. Uh. Ninja Turtles. <laughs> I did that. I did. I did five starter uh, Fast Forces starter Ninja Turtles with two Michelangelos, uh, and then the Turtle Van and Talia Al Ghul, and they're martial artists. And Talia Al Ghul is April O'Neil, so a way sexier, more deadly April O'Neil. Okay, uh, number six. Do you have any uh, suggestions for maps to use for Halloween? The new Battle World maps look perfect for Halloween. The Weird World, and then whatever's on the other side, the real, the Regency one. The yeah, like those are that's that's a really good Halloween map. Um, let's see here. Uh, okay, in comic TV or movies, which is the best and worst costumes? Uh, that heroes or villains wear, and did Wiz kids do a good job on the sculpture of that character? Yeah, I hate to say it, I have really no comment on that because I'm really bad uh, about like costumes. Because for me, technically, it's up to the artist, and with everything sort of being standardized, I really, um, I like, yeah, I don't know. I'll just leave it at that. I, I don't know. All right, let's see where we're at. Okay. Um, I think I addressed his W uh, W E uh, questions before. Um, yeah, I think I've dealt with those. Okay. Uh, here we go. Vehicles. Uh, best and worst vehicles of all time, and why? I hate to say it, the best vehicle of all time is the Quinjet. I mean, now, if we just want to talk about it as being a vehicle, it's a tie between the invisible jet and cop cars. And I know some people will be like, really? But yeah, like cop cars were OP. Uh, and if, if I had classic cop cars, I would still be playing cop cars. Uh, I wouldn't think about, you know, selling my the cop cars that I have. But I know that there's nobody that would want to buy my current cop cars. So, um, they're, yeah, they're just here. And then speaking of which, I'm looking at one right now. And uh, they don't have GCPD on the actual cop car. It's just a, it just says GPD. It says police GPD. So yeah, didn't even notice that 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 could have been a 
misprint that no one's really noticed for years. All right, uh, most overrated, underrated uh, vehicles and why? If I would, if it was any other time in history, I would say Blackbird would be overrated. But there's no other resources, so it doesn't have to compete. Uh, underrated Dune buggy, definitely right now. That sucker can be annoying. Uh, best and worst looking, uh, yeah, best and worst looking uh, vehicles uh, and why. Uh, best one was the uh, Blue Beetle uh, buggy. Um, yeah, it just, it, it was huge, it looked cool. Uh, worst one, the cop car. Uh, actually, no, Haunted Tank. Haunted Tank. That mold is just not very good. Like, you could have had, like, an explosion or something coming off one of the guns. That would have been better. Uh, vehicles have changed over time. What changes did you like or didn't like? I like the fact that vehicles can't be carried because that had to be fixed. Because there was some stupid stuff going on with the charged up that I, I didn't like. So, yeah, that's that's pretty much my answer, answer to that question. What suggestion would you make to uh, with kids to improve vehicles or the rules dealing with vehicles? Clarify uh, autonomous uh, mode a bit more. Make it so it works like old autonomous mode instead of currently where you get take a click of damage for doing anything. Uh, and... Um, yeah, I, I think that that would be it. Uh, which vehicles would you want WizKids to make or remake, and why? Uh, Bat cycle. Bat cycle. Best fun that I've had with vehicles is with Bat cycle. So yeah. All right, uh, that's pretty much it for today's episode. I've I've been ripping and running, uh, and just a, a lot to to take care of so uh yeah uh i'd like to thank you all for listening uh and i know like this is a little bit shorter than normal so uh <laughs> yeah uh so let's uh wrap this up uh you can follow me on twitter at start over pod it came from outer space and told me at the third star to the right in quadrant 24B circling that sun very closely is an accelerated planet that grows a wonderful fruit but unfortunately the temperature of that fruit will incinerate your body and you'll never get the benefits of it yeah sort of sad alright uh, you can uh, follow me on twitter because following me on twitter is the best way to know when there's a new show up you can also email me at startingoverpodcast at gmail.com. That's startingoverpodcast at gmail.com. If you wish to opine, keep it piffy, keep it interesting, keep it uh, uh, awesome, baby. Uh, let me know what you're expecting to see at Worlds so I can play test it. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can donate to the show by going over to startingoverpodcast.blogspot.com and uh, clicking that... Uh, PayPal link there. And uh, if you would like to uh, also support the show, you can get a, uh, a t-shirt from the link below. All right, uh, that's it. I'd like to thank you all for listening. Uh, and remember, we all have to start over.